Today we'll speak with Martin Pistorius, the author of Ghost Boy. A mysterious illness struck Martin at the age of 12 and he lapsed into a coma. Years later, he regained consciousness but was essentially locked inside his own body, unable to communicate with the outside world. Through sheer heart and determination, he was eventually able to break through the communication barrier and let friends and family know that he was awake. It's a truly inspiring story. Uh, Martin, welcome to the show. Um, we hear that at the age of 12, you fell ill, uh, first losing your voice and then sleeping consistently. Within 18 months, you were mute and wheelchair bound with what doctors said was the mind of a baby. They gave you only two years to live. What do you remember from that period of time when you first fell ill? Thank you. It's great to be on the show. Yes. Unfortunately, I don't remember anything from that time. However, listening to stories from family and friends, as well as looking at old photographs, I was able to build up a picture of what I was like as a child. While writing my book, Ghost Boy, I spent a lot of time specifically trying to discover what I was like as a child and what happened around the time I first got sick. Now, Martin, around the time you were 16, uh, I guess your mind started to come back, yet you were still unable to let anybody know that you were there awake and aware. I mean, they just saw this unresponsive boy in a wheelchair. Um, what was it like being trapped inside your own body, completely unable to let your parents know that the real you was there? I don't know if it is possible to truly describe what it was like, but I often say it was like being a ghost which is why the title of my book is Ghost Boy. You can hear, see, and understand everything around you, but you have absolutely no power over anything. For me, that feeling of complete and utter powerlessness is probably the worst feeling I have ever experienced. It is like you don't exist, and every single thing in your life is decided by someone else. Everything, from what you wear to what you eat and drink, even if you eat or drink, to where you will be tomorrow or next week, and there is nothing you can do about it. Unbelievable strength it must have taken um, for you, Martin. Uh, what was your day-to-day -day life like for the next several years, and how did you manage to find the mental strength to cope with that unbearable situation? Did you develop any sort of inner fantasies to kind of occupy your mind during that time? I spent most of my days in a care center for children with severe physical and mental disabilities. I often sat in the same exact spot for hours at a time. If there was a radio on nearby that would help. But I mostly just tried to cope by escaping into my mind. I would literally lose myself in my imagination. I'd imagine all sorts of things, like being very small and climbing into a spaceship and flying away. I would sometimes watch things move, whether it be how sunlight moved throughout the day or watching insects of some sort scurry about. But really, I lived in my mind. As the months turned into years, Martin, did you think you'd be able to communicate with your family and try to somehow alert them that you were conscious and you knew exactly what was happening around you? At first, yes. But then as time passed and I began to realize that nobody knew I was there, I resigned myself to the fact that this is it. This is all my life will ever be. This scared me at times, the thought of spending the remainder of my life locked inside my body waiting to die, probably all alone in some care home. It was often too much for me to bear, and it terrified me so much that I tried to avoid thinking about it. Uh, somewhere around the age of 25, there was a new caretaker that kind of had a hunch that you were aware, and they began to convince others at the facility. Um, so you're taken, you're evaluated for an alternative communication device, which you pass, and a whole new world is opened up to you. Why don't you describe what that's like um, when the new caretaker had a feeling that you were in there? You must have been incredibly excited. Yes, I was. It's almost indescribable. It was one of the most profound and exciting moments of my life. It not only gave me something else to focus on and think about, but it changed my life. I think being seen and having another person validate your existence is incredibly important. Not just for me in that moment, but for all of us. In a sense, it makes you feel like you matter. Uh, now that you're able to communicate with this device, um, how did your life progress from that point, Martin? The gift of communication possesses enormous power. It changed everything. My world exploded back into life, which was so exciting, 
but also really daunting and even scary for me at times too. Suddenly I was essentially flung back into the world, a world that I didn't really know or know how to live in. But the moment I tasted freedom, nothing was going to stop me. I got a job, made friends, and ultimately found the love of my life. During that time, did you did the doctors ever figured out、um, what exactly your illness was? Did they figure out what no, happened? No, not really. Apart from testing positive for tuberculosis of the brain and cryptococcal meningitis, there has been no conclusive diagnosis. To be honest, the mystery behind my illness doesn't bother me at all. I am who I am, and I'm okay with that. I don't dwell on the past or even really think about it. I live and enjoy life as much and as best I can. That's just an unbelievable spirit in,、yes. inside this man. It's amazing.、Mm-hmm. Um, now, clearly, you're speaking to us through one of these communication devices.、Um, I'm assuming you can type, so you have some mobility.、Um, is there any hope that you'll ever regain your voice and all of your mobility again, Martin? It has taken a lot of hard work over the last several years, but I have already been fortunate to gain better control over my hands and increased upper body strength. This has enabled me to be more mobile in a wheelchair. But I have my doubts on ever being able to walk again, mainly because of various surgeries I have had. Frankly, it is more important to me to be the mobile than to walk. Even if I were to start to walk again. It would be painful and slow, whereas I am now far more able and agile in my wheelchair. As far as regaining my voice, no, I don't think so. But then you never know what the future holds. But to me, it is not important how you communicate, but that you communicate. The ability to communicate is not only a human right, but a fundamental aspect of being human. Through communication, we convey our thoughts, feelings, and choices. Expressing our personality and connecting with others. You know, it's been amazingly uplifting to actually hear your story because, as Ethan said before, it's so many things that people take for granted every day, and we have a fresh perspective of somebody that found their voice again、mm-hmm. and able to communicate.、Uh, why don't you tell us what your life is like today? Life is fantastic. <laughs> I currently live in the England with my beautiful wife Jonah. I became an author, and my book Ghost Boy has thankfully. Been well received and spent ten straight weeks on the New York Times bestseller list.、Mm-hmm. I was also fortunate enough to be able to study and graduate with a degree in computer science and got my driver's license. Life、wow. really is wonderful. I am truly happy now. That's so amazing. You know, the the guy、mm-hmm. went from being the ghost boy and living like、yeah. that, just a living hell for. Ten or more years. Now he's married. He got a degree. Yes. I mean, driver's license. Driver's license. There's there's hope for anybody.、Um, well, we're、uh, mm-hmm. about out of time here, Martin. Do you have any parting words for our audience? I just hope that anyone who hears my story will come to know that there is always hope, no matter how small. I want to encourage those listening to treat everyone they meet with kindness, dignity, compassion, and respect, whether you think they understand or not. Never underestimate the power of the mind. All the importance of love and faith, and to never stop dreaming. An incredible story, Martin Pistorius. Thank you so much for joining us. Author of the New York Times best-selling memoir *Ghost Boy: The Miraculous Escape of a Misdiagnosed Boy Trapped Inside His Own Body*. We truly appreciate you for joining us here on American Medicine today. Thank、Continued、you, Martin. Continued good health.